Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds, is the infamous J. Robert Oppenheimer quote and probably one of the most famous quotes in history. Today we are going to explore the man, his struggle between power and conscience and the trailblazing scientific career that led to him earning the title Father of the Atomic Bomb. Julius Robert Oppenheimer was born to Julius S. Oppenheimer and Ella Friedman on April 22, 1904 in New York City. His father was a German immigrant who worked as a textile importer and his mother was an American-born painter. He had one sibling, a younger brother named Frank, who also became a notable physicist and science educator. Frank Oppenheimer is known for his work in particle physics and for establishing the Exploratorium, a renowned science museum in San Francisco. Robert and his brother Frank received a private education during their early years. They attended the Ethical Culture Fieldston School in New York City and much later continued his education at Harvard University and the University of Cambridge, where he pursued his interest in physics. While in school, Robert was described as an exceptional student by his colleagues and teachers. He displayed a keen intellect, a strong work ethic and a deep passion for physics. His colleagues and mentors admired his ability to grasp complex scientific concepts and his dedication to his studies. Oppenheimer graduated from Harvard University in 1925 with a bachelor's degree in chemistry and later pursued a PhD in physics at the University of Göttingen in Germany. His doctoral thesis was on quantum mechanics and he received his PhD in 1927. His education and academic achievements laid the foundation for his future contributions to the field of theoretical physics and his pivotal role in the Manhattan Project. In 1942, as the United States entered the Second World War and the urgency to develop an atomic bomb increased, a committee of scientists and military officials sought out individuals with the necessary scientific knowledge to carry out the project. The Manhattan Project was commissioned by the United States government as a top-secret research and development project during World War II with the goal of developing an atomic bomb. The project was authorized by President Franklin D. Roosevelt in response to fears that Nazi Germany might be developing nuclear weapons. The formal order to proceed with the Manhattan Project was issued in 1942 and it was under the direction of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers and the supervision of the U.S. Army's Major General Leslie R. Groves. Oppenheimer's reputation as a distinguished physicist, his work on quantum mechanics and his experience as a professor at the University of California, Berkeley, caught the attention of the committee. On November 17, 1942, he was appointed as the scientific director of the Manhattan Project, where he played a pivotal role in coordinating and leading the efforts to develop the world's first atomic bomb. As the scientific director of the Manhattan Project, Oppenheimer led a team of brilliant scientists and engineers from various disciplines. Some of the prominent scientists who worked under him include Enrico Fermi, Richard Feynman, Niels Bohr, Hans Beth, Edward Teller, John von Neumann and even Oppenheimer's younger brother Frank also worked on the Manhattan Project as a physicist. The Manhattan Project went through several stages, from the testing of the bomb's components to the actual detonation of the first atomic bomb. The first successful test of an atomic bomb took place on July 16, 1945 at the Trinity Test Site near Alamogordo, New Mexico. The test device, nicknamed the Gadget, used plutonium as the fissile material. The detonation produced an explosive yield equivalent at approximately 20 kilotons of TNT. It was a success, a success that birthed his infamous remark, Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. As we all know, the nuclear weapons went ahead to be even more infamous than his line with the bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. These bombings had a significant impact on Japan's decision to surrender, effectively ending World War II. However, they also marked the beginning of the atomic age and raised profound ethical implications surrounding the use of nuclear weapons. The Manhattan Project and the successful development of the atomic bomb ushered in a new era of scientific research, military strategy and global security concerns. After World War II, Oppenheimer continued to be involved in scientific research and played a significant role in shaping the direction of post-war science in the United States. 
Following his advocacy for the regulation of atomic energy, Oppenheimer was appointed as the chairman of the General Advisory Committee of the newly formed U.S. Atomic Energy Commission. He advised the government on nuclear energy policy and advocated for civilian control of atomic energy whilst also emphasizing the need for international cooperation and arms control. He also became the director for the Institute of Advanced Study or the IAS in Princeton, New Jersey in 1947, holding that position until 1966. The IAS was a prestigious research institution that provided a stimulating environment for advanced scientific research, allowing him to collaborate with many prominent scientists and mathematicians. During his time at the Institute for Advanced Study, Oppenheimer engaged in research and discussions with various renowned scientists, including theoretical physicists like Albert Einstein, Wolfgang Pauli, Freeman Dyson and Julian Schwinger. He also interacted with mathematicians like John von Neumann and Kurt Gordel, amongst others. Oppenheimer remained a vocal advocate for arms control and international cooperation to prevent nuclear proliferation. He called for a halt in the development of thermonuclear weapons and urged for diplomatic efforts to reduce nuclear tensions between the United States and the Soviet Union. During the early years of the Cold War, the United States government conducted extensive investigations into individuals suspected of having communist ties or sympathies. J. Robert Oppenheimer, due to his past political associations and involvement with left-wing organizations in the 1930s, came under scrutiny during his era of heightened anti-communist sentiment. This time would come to be known as the McCarthy era, or the Second Red Scare. Oppenheimer had been associated with various leftist and progressive groups during his younger years, which included his involvement with organizations that advocated for social and political reform. In the 1930s, he was a member of left-leaning intellectual circles and had briefly supported some leftist causes. These associations raised suspicions about his loyalty and made him a target of investigation during the Second Red Scare, a period characterized by widespread fear of communist infiltration in the United States. States. In 1953, Oppenheimer's security clearance was subjected to a formal inquiry by the Atomic Energy Commission, led by the chairman, Louis Strauss. The hearing, known as the Oppenheimer Security Clearance Hearing, was held to determine whether his past associations and actions posed a security risk. Oppenheimer was accused of being a security risk due to his alleged communist sympathies and the belief that he might be susceptible to espionage or subversion. The hearing, which took place from April to June 1954, was highly controversial and divisive within the scientific community and the broader public. Many prominent scientists, including Albert Einstein and Enrico Fermi, testified in support of Oppenheimer, highlighting his contributions to science and his loyalty to the United States. Despite the defense presented by his colleagues, Oppenheimer's security clearance was revoked by the AEC with a vote of 4 to 1 decision. The reasons cited for the revocation were not solely based on his past political associations, but also on concerns about his perceived lack of candor during the investigation. The decision to strip Oppenheimer of his security clearance profoundly impacted his career and reputation. The loss of security clearance effectively barred Oppenheimer from classified government work and significantly limited his ability to contribute to sensitive defense-related projects. It also cast a shadow over his scientific legacy, leaving him deeply disappointed and disillusioned with the government's treatment. Despite the setback, Oppenheimer continued his research and academic work at the Institute for Advanced Study, where he remained an influential figure in theoretical physics until his death in 1967. Over time, his contributions to science and his role as a leader in the development of the atomic bomb have come to be recognized and celebrated, and he is remembered as one of the most significant physicists of the 20th century. After his experiences during the McCarthy era and the revocation of his security clearance, J. Robert Oppenheimer's views on science and society became more introspective and complex. He remained deeply committed to scientific research and advocated for the responsible use of scientific knowledge and technology. His experiences during the Manhattan Project and the development of the atomic bomb had a profound impact on him. He became acutely aware of the destructive power of science and technology, especially in the context of nuclear weapons. This awareness led him to emphasize the importance of scientific responsibility and ethical considerations in the pursuit of scientific knowledge. 
Oppenheimer was also deeply concerned about the ethical implications of scientific discoveries and their potential consequences for humanity. He was critical of the uncontrolled pursuit of technological advancements without adequate consideration of the broader societal impact. He also urged for greater government support for basic scientific research and education. He believed that investing in scientific research and nurturing the next generation of scientists were essential for the progress and well-being of society. Throughout his life, Oppenheimer struggled with the moral and ethical dilemmas of science, particularly in the context of nuclear weaponry. His experiences during the Manhattan Project and the subsequent controversies shaped his perspective on the role of science in society and the responsibilities of scientists. On February 18, 1967, J. Robert Oppenheimer passed away at the age of 62. He died in Princeton, New Jersey, where he had been living and working as the director of the Institute for Advanced Study. He died of throat cancer. He had been diagnosed with the disease in 1965. The cancer affected his health severely and despite medical treatments, he succumbed to the illness. Oppenheimer's funeral was held in Princeton, New Jersey on February 21, 1967. It took place at the Princeton University Chapel and was attended by over 600 people. His family members, including his wife Catherine Kitty Oppenheimer and their children, were also in attendance. Even despite his loss of security clearance, representatives from the US government and the military, acknowledging Oppenheimer's significant role in the development of the atomic bomb during World War II, honored his memory. Oppenheimer's death marked the end of a remarkable career in theoretical physics and left behind a lasting legacy as one of the key figures in the development of the atomic bomb and a significant contributor to the scientific community. To the present day, J. Robert Oppenheimer remains a highly respected and influential figure in the history of science and the development of nuclear weapons. His contributions to theoretical physics, leadership in the Manhattan Project and his subsequent advocacy for arms control and scientific responsibility have left a lasting impact on the scientific community and society at large. In recent years, Oppenheimer's popularity has not waned. He continues to be a subject of interest in books, documentaries and academic discussions. His complex personality, contributions to science and involvement in the creation of the atomic bomb have sparked ongoing debates and explorations of the ethical and moral dilemmas surrounding the use of scientific knowledge for destructive purposes. Numerous biographies and historical accounts have been published, shedding light on different aspects of his life and work. Furthermore, Oppenheimer's life has been depicted in various forms of media, including movies and television series, the most notable being The Oppenheimer Movie, written and directed by Christopher Nolan, released in July 2023. J. Robert Oppenheimer has come a long way from being the son of an immigrant to one of the most notable physicists in modern times. His life has taken many turns, but he has most certainly left his mark on the world.